Lord. Welcome to Scripture Buddies. We're so excited you're here. My name's Colleen Lowe, and this is where we talk about Christ and general conference talks and scriptures, modern and ancient scriptures. And then this week is week four, and we're going to be discussing Elder Gong's talk, Holiness to the Lord in Everyday Life. And then the scripture that uh, President Emily Bell Freeman asked us to go over was in the Bible Dictionary, Holiness, which I did go over that and... Hopefully you guys will have some more insight on that. And I even listened to a bunch of Jewish rabbis talk about what that means to them. And then the word is holiness, which in Hebrew is Kodesh, which I'm probably not saying correctly. And it means consecrated or dedicated. And then the phrase or promise is all around us are opportunities to laugh, delight, see with grateful eyes. Ours is a gospel of joy and holiness in everyday life. Holiness sets things apart for sacred purpose, but holiness also invites us to infuse daily living with the sacred. And then the affirmation is, I am choosing a life of everyday holiness into my daily life by turning my thoughts to the Savior and striving to follow him so that I can always um, walk beside him. So I just love that. And then also, if you didn't get to watch the inklings that Emily Bell Freeman does on Instagram this last week, um, I would highly recommend it. It's probably the best explanation of the Aaronic Priesthood I've ever heard in my whole life. I had John screen recorded so we can listen to it. I would definitely go back and listen. I took four pages of notes front and back. She said, if you could teach, could you teach a lesson for 45 minutes on the Aaronic priesthood without talking about the sacrament or passing the sacrament or the deacons? And her explanation of it, oh, I don't have my journal here. That's too bad. It's in my bedroom. But I took four pages of notes. It was pretty mind-blowing. I'm going to listen to that thing over and over again until I can articulate it without having to look at notes. So anyway... I would highly recommend going and listening to that. And mostly um, it talked about how the Aaronic Priesthood is, I think it was DNC 13 or 15, I can't remember, but it's the ministering of angels and serving each other. And oh, good, John just brought it to me. I'm telling you. Let's see here. Let me just tell you just. Yeah, you couldn't use it. Yeah, DNC 13, service, fellow ser ministering of angels, fellow servants, and then DNC 107. And um, really, she talked about it, the bottom line is the Aaronic priesthood is an added uh, ability or ca uh, capacity to overcome the trials and adversity in our life. And that it's kind of like, and then we'll get into today's discussion. But she compared it to getting like a pizza delivery or an ice cream delivery from Uber Eats. And she said, what's the most important part of that, that whole process? Is it the, the company that's making the ice cream? Is it the delivery boy who's the authorized person to deliver the, the, the ice cream? Is it the container that holds the ice cream? Or is it what's inside the cup? And so I would highly recommend um, it's, um, that you go listen to that. So anyway, we're going to figure out if, if we're technically allowed to put that up on our thing, or if we have to make it private, because the only problem with listening to something live on Instagram is you have to listen to it all the way through. You can't rewind or move ahead or backwards. And so that's why I had John screen record it so I can skip over the parts or re-listen to the parts anyway. So we're learning, I'm learning, we're all learning together, but let me tell you, it was mind blowing. Four pages of notes, like I ran and got my thing and then I've listened to it a few other times in the in the car. So, and then also welcome to our new friends. We're so glad you're here. The way it works is that we all just either listen or share. If you wanna raise your virtual hand, if you wanna share, that's great. If you don't wanna share, that's great. And if you have questions, just, you know, anything you want to share, you can invite other people and friends to join us. Anyway, if this is my first, this is the beginning, you know, the second, I mean, the first whole year that we've done this. And um, I was scared to death to do this. And it's actually now one of my favorite things I do. So I just want to share um, 
the question that I asked you guys is, what does holiness to the Lord in every day look like? And then look for the promises, which I'll share toward the end. I wrote all my promises. Um, I, I now write my promises where it says sprinkles that I find in each talk, because then I can go back and think. Uh, I like to know what's in it for Colleen Lowe. And, and so um, I'm looking for like the promises. What, how does that apply to me, right? That's why I go to the temple. I go for me. My 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 relatives, uh, dead relatives, are just uh, get a benefit too. But I go for my peace and power and transformation. So I don't know if anyone would like to go first, since we've already heard me talk for a while. But and I love this talk, just so you know. And I really do think that. Um, and then also, the holiness, um, the word holiness is so important. And I really feel like our homes can be sacred places. I know John dedicated our home. And we, we, I think wherever we're standing should be holy ground. That's, uh, that is just my opinion. Remember also, this is just the opinion of Colleen Lowe, not, and all of us, not the opinions of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So, I mean, the official church, you know. So anyway, I don't know who wants to go first, but I just love you guys so much. And I watched three other videos yesterday about... Um, the second coming and, and and there's so many things I want to share with you that I'll have John email you. So anyway, I just love you. And I'm so excited to talk to you guys today, but I do feel like we can be holy. We can have holy experiences anywhere and that we get to decide how sanctified and holy we are. Right. And what we let into, we, we get to decide what we consume, whether it be entertainment or music, reading the books we read, we get to, the conversations we have, the thoughts we think about, the food we consume, and we get to decide um, how how clean our vessel is. Anyway, so I don't know who would love to go. Adrian, do you want to go? Hi, Colleen. You always know I want to talk, right? I love you. I love that. Um, yeah. Okay. So I was kind of all over the map with this one. <laughs> And I liked some of the other things that were attached to it. Like you attached um, Elder Bednar's talk that was um, things as they really are. And then I went and listened to um, his young adult fireside from this last weekend, which was things as they really are 2.0. And then Wasn't it, I, good? it was, so, yeah, so good. Like just really interesting because I was kind of trying to make connections with Elder Gong's talk. I really liked his anecdote at the beginning where he's talking about like, the AI, like his grandkids made the AI thing, have a contest with him about, you know, like who could be funny, you know, like the dad jokes thing. Um, but to be honest with you, the first time I heard it, I was like, that part engaged me. And then whatever he said after that sounded sort of like, wah, 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 wah. I'm like, what was he talking about after that? I couldn't connect the dots at all. And I might need you guys to still connect some of them for me. But then listening to Elder Gong's talk, combined with Elder Bednar, I'm like, I think they are trying to tell us something about um, virt a virtual life versus like real discipleship, I guess. And I don't know, like, it's kind of interesting that this kind of follows on the heels of Halloween for me, which I absolutely love and adore. And I've been thinking about why I love Halloween so much, because I was like a drama kid, kind of, and I really like dressing up always as a little kid and I like pretending to be someone else. And so usually at Halloween time, that's to be somebody really funny, like, and to get a lot of attention from people, like, thinking I'm funny. Um, so I was thinking about that this week, and then also thinking, what's well, funny? Like, what am I trying to do? Like, what, if, to whom or to what am I giving my life? Like, what am I looking for? Like, am I looking for, like, validation from other people or people laughing at my jokes? Or, like, am I trying to do Heavenly Father's will? Like, and then I was thinking about the contrast between like, you know, I don't know. He was also talking a lot about things that bring us joy. So I don't think it's anything wrong with me, like finding joy in dressing up and being funny on Halloween or enjoying any holiday or enjoying my family or enjoying going to Disneyland or whatever it is. I think all of those things are to give us joy. But I think kind of what I was taking out of this was that like, Really, the person that's going to give me the most joy if I try to dress up and pretend that I'm that person, it's going to be Jesus, right? Like, if I'm trying to personify Jesus Christ, that's when it becomes holy, I think. Like, 
it's still everyday normal life stuff. He gave those examples of they seem kind of disconnected to me. I hope some of you guys have insights as to why all of those things are holy, but they were really simple examples of somebody learned to pay tithing or somebody, you know, like it was basically like weak things becoming strong was what I kind of got out of those examples. Um, but yeah, my thoughts are kind of all over the place, but I do, I don't know. It felt to me like the whole idea is just to become holy through sort of everyday experiences. Is that what you got? I don't know. Yes, yes, yes. And I think that I'll, I think that we get to be holy. Like I liked how he gave the examples. Hold on. Like in paragraph. Um, hold on one second. Okay. He gave starting in paragraph 29, right? And there's different ones, but and not just 29. Um where he says, holiness to the Lord in everyday life looks like a young missionary, a returning missionary who learned to let God prevail in your life. Um, he, he was asked to bless someone who was very sick. And the missionary said, I have faith. I will bless him to recover. Yet the returning missionary says, I learned in that moment to pray not for what I wanted, but for what the Lord knew the person needed. And I blessed the brother with peace and comfort. And he later passed away peacefully and really letting God prevail in our lives. Um, and 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 submitting our will to him is is one of the ways right of being holy and i think that might be for me one of the hardest ways to be holy because i know when our son had cancer and it looked like carter was dying and he was doing really poorly and it was right in front of my eyes and unfolding not like getting a phone call later like your kid died but like in the moment walking in to watching his vitals you know going down and down and down and in that moment, the natural man, Colleen Lowe, was yelling at God in her head. I didn't want to disturb the medical team that was working on him. But in that moment, I was yelling at God in my head, like, oh, my gosh, what are you doing? Why are you trying to take my son? And because I want what I want. And it's in these moments, I think, that we start to find out what do we really believe. And I think that that's what that holiness when she asked us to look up holiness and I was looking, I watched a bunch of rabbis because I read all those scriptures, but I was trying to figure out what they really meant. The profane versus the, the uh, holy. And this one rabbi explained that he used to be a chaplain in a hospital and he would go when, and meet with the people who had requested to get a blessing from him before they had surgery. But there, when he was walking out of the hospital one day, there was another guy who was clearly Jewish because he had the, I don't know what they call that, his thing on his head. And he was going to surgery and um, he didn't get, he, and this is when he was younger. He said, I didn't get, he didn't ask for a blessing. So I thought he was just really, um, I don't know if he's call it foolish, but he thought he should have asked for a blessing. Right. And then later when he was talking to another rabbi about this, he said, well, maybe he was certain in his faith in that moment and that he didn't feel like he needed the blessing. But I feel like there's an ebb and flow because that gentleman had said that he thought that if you were a man of, of holiness, that you would always be certain in your faith. But that this other rabbi explained to him that um, there's an ebb and flow for all religious people that of uh, doubt and fear together, right? Feeling like God is far away from you and abandoning you. And that, and then other moments, you feel like God is close to you, right? And I feel like it's a, it's a constant line of going back and forth because in that moment when Carter was plummeting, I was yelling at God and, and God's response was very interesting because he didn't say, oh, Colleen, poor thing, you're, you're suffering here. He said, this was the response that I heard in my head. He's not your son. He's on loan to you. And he's my son. And you're telling me what to do. You're not being respectful. You're not saying I will be done. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I want what I want in this moment, right? I don't want what God's will is for me in this moment. And then Carter did live. They did get him stable and put him in the ICU. But I do think that these are the moments that help us define and shape what we really believe, right? Because we, we have, when we have to come face to face with it, it's, it's easy in theory to think, oh, this is how I'm going to react and this is what I believe. But when 
do I really believe in the plan of salvation? Do I really believe that we're all sons and daughters of God, right? And I don't know. I just feel like there's an ebb and a flow of it, right? I don't Yeah. know. Well, and I don't know about you, but sometimes for me, it's in those harder, bigger trials that it's easy. I mean, you weren't questioning whether there's a God. You were yelling at him. You knew there's one and you're mad at him, right? Like, I think it's easier sometimes for me to see black and white, know that he's there, like when I'm going through hard stuff. But sometimes it's the everyday nitty gritty little stuff where I rely on myself or I... forget about him or I totally put my will above his when it's like when it's not doesn't feel like a crisis when it doesn't feel like life or death that's where things really start to fall through the cracks and go to pot for me you know what I mean Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, sometimes when we're desperate, we turn more to God, right? Mm most people do like that's even that's a lot of times people who don't say they believe in him We'll start to believe in them when stuff goes all wrong in their life. Like when things are floating along, they don't have to think about it. -hmm. Yeah, and, and we get to choose how much space we make for him on a daily basis, even when things are going well, right? Right. Mm -hmm. We get to choose the relationship we have with him completely. In fact, I, I shared this, I think, last week or the week before, or maybe in my testimony at church, I don't know. But um, when we go to somebody's house and we know them well, like, Adrian, I've never been to your home, so I don't know where anything goes. I don't I couldn't help you put clothes away without you directing me or put dishes away. or Right. Um, But like when we when we're at someone's house that we're comfortable, like I was at my cousin's house on Saturday and I helped, um, she had a huge sh baby shower for one of her kids, but she used real dishes and it looked really nice. But the problem is, is that um, she's going to have to wash dishes for three days after that party was over. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it, it was going to be horrible, but I know her well enough because we grew up on the same street. We went to the same college, right? Even though we live an hour away, she's down in San Clemente and I'm up here, right? Um I know her well enough that I just started collecting all the dishes and I started cleaning off all the food and I started stacking them and I loaded the dishwasher and got the dishwasher going and, and started stacking everything and organizing it and throwing out the trash. And they're still opening presents and playing games and doing all this stuff. And my cousin did tell me one time not to, not to do it. Right. And I said, well, I'm a guest in your home. Right. And she said, yeah. I said, well, don't you want your guests to do what they want, what makes them feel most comfortable? And she said, yes. And I said, well, I feel most comfortable if I knew that for the next three days, you're not going to be washing dishes. And there's plenty of other people to visit, right? And so we get to choose that kind of relationship we have, how comfortable we are with the Savior and with God, right? And how much time do we spend with them? And our, do we like how much time do we spend in the scriptures? How much time do we spend asking God, Who do you want me to serve? What do you want me to do for them? Is there anyone else you want me to check on? Um, how much time do we spend in the temple for those of us who can go to the temple, right? So we get to decide every day how much time we want and what kind of relationship we're going to have with the Spirit and with God and Jesus. And that's going to change day to day and at different seasons in our lives. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, and you can make any situation holy. That's what I kind of thought about this whole talk. It's like, whatever, you know, it doesn't have to be at the temple or it doesn't have to be at church or a church function. It can be like, I loved your examples when you're like talking about going to the airport. Like you can decide that even traveling or anything mundane that you do normally can be a holy experience. If you're making it sacred to the Lord, you're turning it over to him. Yes. And, and, and we get to decide. And I think that was the point of this talk. Cause I also loved here when it said in paragraph 31, a sister does her best each day after her husband was unfaithful to her and the children. One of my daughter's best friends is uh, just had this happen is going through this right this second. And I was in Texas when it was unfolding. And she said, I deeply admire her and others like her. One day while folding laundry, her hand on a stack of garments, she sighed to herself, what's the point? She felt a tender voice assure her, your covenants are with me. And that's one of the promises, right? Your covenants are with me. And uh, my daughter's husband gave her a blessing. And it, that was one of the first things that Heavenly Father clarified in the blessing was that this doesn't change your covenants. 
with me at all. Doesn't doesn't break the bind the bound the bound of you and your eternal family with me, right? So we can choose to make anything holy. Anything. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else, gorgeous? I think I like it. I wish you, I should give somebody else the floor. Okay. Is my I don't know who else is on her side of the light in my eyes. Aline, I would love to hear from Aline if Aline's available. Good morning. I'm finally here. Yay! Thanks, Adrian. I I found this talk to be kind of hard to put my finger on exactly what was I guess the I finally figured out the point was how to include Heavenly Father in every part of our life. So um, when I say my prayers, I ask him to be with me. And uh, then I thought, well, help me see how I can keep being with you. You know, it isn't just a one-way street here. So um, we need to ask, you know, is this thy will or what can I do to help thee? And uh, it's up to me to try to be with him, not just ask him to be with me. So I, that was my thought that we just need to include him in all of our dealings. And that makes any place holy. Um, the counsel that we're given by the Lord throughout all the scriptures for especially now to handle the last days, is stand in holy places. That's our counsel. And uh, this talk kind of showed many, many ways we can make where we are a holy place and therefore be safe. So I guess that's about all I can think of at the moment. But I love it when I feel his spirit and I do feel safe. If I go on it, if I go... I'm con contemplating a trip. I'll ask, is this what you want me to do? Is this okay with thee? Will you be with me? Is this okay? I Because I don't feel safe unless I know that he's approving of what I'm doing and that I'm where he wants me to be. So when I'm on the plane and it's jostling all over and I think I might die, I think, well, this is where he wants me. I mean, he's he said it's okay, so it must this must be okay. So it gives me courage when I have counsel with him before I march forward. It gives me a feeling of safety. Yeah, it's true, right? I think so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, gorgeous. Who else would love to share? Irene, do you want to share? Oh, I was just trying to catch up on reading <laughs> because I didn't come prepared. And I was reading about Elder De Jong's, um AI's attempt at a dad joke. That was a pretty pathetic joke. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But it, it was it's so it was perfect as far as emulating Garrett. <laughs> Garrett W. Young. I don't know why I was saying D. Anyway, or Gong. <laughs> um, <clears throat> De Young was an old, an old uh, seventy. Oh, that's why I say that. <laughs> well, anyway, Garrett W. Gong um, does have an <clears throat> uplifting, warm. Um, way of speaking always always has this tender um side to it. So AI was got all of that. They just didn't get the joke part. <laughs> uh, um, I loved. <clears throat> excuse me. I I love um Elizabeth Barrett Browning's um poem about the bush that. That was just so perfect. Maybe I should find that. Um, where did you have that? Uh, the the whole concept that with the blueberries. Yeah, that. Um, 
earth crammed with heaven and every common bush of fire with God, but only he who sees takes off his shoes. The rest sit round and pluck blackberries. <laughs> that is just so, <clears throat> so perfect because um, I was thinking about how uh, beyond the scriptures, truth is taught to us every day in in our lives and in in um in what we see all around us uh, we we get witnesses of of god's love in the beauty that's around us and i was trying to figure out how to um introduce the idea that um that we lived with our heavenly parents before this this life, and that we will become like them. And I was, uh, and I thought about you know, there. Are, the scriptures are, you know, they're interpreted a lot of different ways, and um, and it can be confusing. But I I was thinking about that. Our life, we are, we know we're made in the image of God, and we have parents, and we we're taught by them, and we're loved by them, and we become like them, and and it's that is that scripture, our life, you know, the the beauty around us, and the and the life that we live, that's holiness, and that is truth. Um, and I don't know if I can present it that way to my friend, but that's what I was thinking about. <laughs> Thanks, gorgeous. And and we get to we get to be transformed in paragraph twenty. Um, it got, it, earlier talked about a lady that was in a nursing program and she wasn't able to articulate, you know, her beliefs very well. And um, in her nursing class, this is paragraph 19. She said, I was the only member of the church and the only one married. Many times I left class frustrated or crying because I felt my classmates singled me out and made negative comments about my beliefs, my wearing my garments or being married so young. And then in paragraph 20, I love the transformation. This past semester, I learned how to better voice my beliefs and be a good uh, gospel example. My knowledge and testimony grew because I was tested in my ability to stand alone and be strong in what I believe. And I feel like transformation, because we get to decide, right? Like she was in this situation. And for me, like I'm becoming more articulate at I at um in in the gospel and the in the scriptures. And I, I especially if we come from a place of love, I think that um love is the most important thing. I think especially like today's election day, right? And it's a very volatile and turbulent day and in times in our society. And I think that no matter how the election turns out, um, I hope that we'll all be loving Christ-like examples of uh, whether your candidate wins or loses, or if you didn't like any of them or whatever it is. I just hope that in the end, we're all disciples of Christ, right? And and I think that um, Satan is using so many tactics to make people seem inhuman and pit people against each other and to, to see people as less than. I, I follow a big uh, Baptist minister, Christian minister on uh, Instagram, Ian Simpkins. He's one of my favorites. And um, he posted last week that 40% of Americans polled uh, think that people from the opposite party of them should be dead. And I just thought that is so sad. And so I hope that we will spread love and light that as sisters <clears throat> in Christ and that we will stand in holy places and bless others and just be the example and love it. Jesus really did set, I, I watched a show called um, Driving Through History and they took, they go to all the places it's on Prime and they go to all the places that Jesus was in the Bible and uh, the apostles. And I re I watched that and 
I just think Jesus was the ultimate example of how to treat others, especially when wrongly accused, right? Jesus was falsely accused. And I just felt like he really gave us the best example. And I feel like the strength comes from being a better emissary and ambassador for him during difficult times, right? And that we can increase our faith even when I'm scared. I get scared, which I know probably I'm a pretty fearless person, but sometimes I get scared about stuff in my life. And just last week, Heavenly Father told me again, double down on your faith. Like double down on your faith, right? So I don't know. Who else would like to share? Okay, I'll go. This okay. is the Hi, everybody. Um, Hi, so the notes I took on this talk, um, I'll just read you my notes. Um, it's I put in here, um, with the holiness of the Lord in everyday life, I put my challenge, my goal, my pursuit now um, that I want to take up, um, like I'm dedicated to doing this now, reading this talk and feeling inspired to do it. And, and knowing that I need to do this um, is to, uh, for me to express more holiness to the Lord, I need to uh, live it, notice it, and embrace it. And that, the examples I have are from the what the reading is, is to laugh more, to see and acknowledge gratefulness in more places, to invite joy in my thoughts, um, becoming my freest, happiest, most authentic, and best self. And remembering to let God prevail and knowing that he knows what's best for me and everyone else. And to also feel the thinness of the veil, um, which I have felt um, when others have prayed for me. And I hope that others will be able to feel the comfort and peace that comes when I pray for them. Um, there are so many layers and so many different ways in experiencing more holiness to the Lord. Um, but for me today, I'll focus on simple steps, like eating all the flavors of the ice cream that God offers to me. Um, sometimes we need more ice cream as we rest in the Lord. Um, there's so many tangles and tosses along the way, and so many struggles, and yet I can still eat ice cream. And I can still swipe the sprinkles off the cupcakes, like this study program. Sometimes we only have time for the sprinkles and not the whole cupcake. Um, so for holiness to the Lord and me in everyday life um, is really going to be focusing more on the joy and the laughter and the beauty and all the wonderful things because I've spent most of my life as a Latter-day Saint in the trenches and suffering and long-suffering and, and using the scriptures to get through such difficult hard places. Like my focus was totally inside out, um, which... Um, even though I had, you know, a testimony of God, I, I know all these things, it wasn't a joyful living. Um, it was so difficult. So I'm just going to try and and, and uh, shake that sheet off and turn it upside down and turn it a different way and uh, take holiness to the Lord in all the beauty and all the opposite sides of the things that he offers us and um, focus more on that. So thanks. I love that. And that was one of the things he talked about, Lori, was the, the veil being thin when we pray for each other, right? And the, the veil can be really thin, right? When we pray for each other, you can feel other people praying for you and you can pray for other people. And I love the joy. We're here to have joy. People ask me all the time, why do you go to Disneyland so often? Because Lori and I go to Disneyland every Wednesday if we're down. I'm like, to have fun. <laughs> do I roller coasters? Like like eat good food, ride roller coasters, feel the joy, laugh my head off when I go down another dip and I'm like, oh, that's so fun, right? So I do feel like we're here to have joy, right? Absolutely. Yeah, why not? And I do feel like we can have joy no matter what's going on, right? I, thank you for sharing, Gorgeous. Linda, did you want to share? Um, good morning. Sorry, I'm feeling a little under the weather today. <laughs> oh, we'll pray for you, gorgeous. 
Oh, you're so nice. Um, and thank you for that. Um, I don't really, I mean, I, I apologize. I popped in a little late, so I missed a lot of the things that were shared. Um, I, I, there's so much in it that I really loved, but I was just thinking um, in paragraph six, holiness also invites us to infuse daily living with the sacred. And I was thinking of something that I heard earlier this week um on uh saw something on social media and the young lady i had written it in my notes um she said quote roughly half of jesus's miracles were interruptions he had a plan he had a destination but he was interruptible i wonder how often we miss what god is doing because we hold too tightly to our own plans close quote and I just really love that. I just kind of thought about as I go through my daily life and there are impressions that I get, but often I'm like, you know, I don't have time for that. <laughs> I'm in the middle of going someplace. I'm in the middle of doing something. Um, but as I've grown spiritually, I've learned to really pay attention to those things. And often I will find that I need to um, interrupt what I'm doing uh, in order to do or to follow those impressions that I receive. And I find out that on the other side of that, it ends up being better for, for me. You know, I end up learning, I end up growing, I end up seeing his hand so much more clearly in my daily life when I allow myself to be interruptible. And I'm easily distracted anyway, so I, I do have to be careful with that. But I... Um, I realize that the Lord is much more present than I think we realize, like he is ever so present with us. And I'm I'm finding that in my daily life, I am looking for him. I'm looking for the little things that he does. And at the end of the day, I really enjoy recording the simplest ways that he is in my life. Um, I'm trying to think offhand. I don't have my journal with me, but I wanted to um, share some some of those moments, but I, I'm sure all of you have those moments. And so, but I guess my um, my takeaway is that he is present and that as I allow him to interrupt my mortal day, I can see him more clearly, see his hand more clearly, and, and in doing so, be able to walk with him more fully uh, and be able to experience more of that sacred holiness in my day. Anyway, those were just some of my thoughts. Thank you for the time. Oh my gosh, Linda, I love it. You know what? Interruptible. We have to be interruptible and 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 pay attention and realize that that's that is that nudge from the spirit saying, "Hey, th I I need you to do something for me over here." And the more we listen to that, the better. And yeah, Jesus was interrupted so many times in his earthly ministry. And what a blessing that was. Thanks for sharing, Gorgeous, and we hope you feel better. Katrina, do you want to share? I don't know who else there. Well, I'd be happy to share today. Um, I really uh, found the timing of the talk this week was really timely because we had a special letter read out on in sacrament meeting from our stake presidency and stake relief society presidency with an invitation to invite God into our homes and purify and protect our families. And I'll share a bit about that in a minute, but I really liked the affirmation that they chose this week, and I'll just read the affirmation. I am choosing a life of everyday holiness. I infuse holiness into my daily life by turning my thoughts to the Savior and striving to follow him so that I can always walk beside him. And I, I felt that was something that I want to recite over and over this week. It was, that one really stood out to me. So what was interesting about this invitation from our stake presidency, they used the quote from President Russell M. Nelson that he gave in one of his talks recently, it was, it is now time that we each implement extraordinary measures, perhaps measures we have never taken before to strengthen our spiritual foundations. Unprecedented times call for unprecedented measures. My dear brothers and sisters, these are the latter days. If you and I are to withstand the forthcoming perils and pressures, 
it is imperative that we each have a firm spiritual foundation built upon the rock of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. So they gave, after they read that quote, they gave us these six invitations. One is to commit to daily family prayer, focus on the word of God, emphasizing the teachings of President Nelson, uh, removing impure and unholy influences from our homes, worshiping on the Sabbath day, serving in the temple, and serving others. And if I just look at this list, and I think, you know, as a family, we've been doing pretty good with these types of things in our lives. But as you listen to President Nelson's quote about taking unprecedented measures and extraordinary measures, there must be more I can do to bring even more holiness into the everyday, into each of these things that we're already doing. What can I do? So that's, that was, I just felt between the talk this week and what the stake has asked us to do and thinking about what President Nelson has asked us to do, that we can do even more and, or at least I can do even more. I won't judge anyone else in your journey, but I do know that something I must be, I need to do more. And I, I'm going to pray about that and seek to bring more holiness into my life. But I just, I love the timing of that this week. I love that. And the good thing is, is we can ask Heavenly Father, what is the more that would be most beneficial for me and you? And he can reveal that to us. And I watched this video, which I'll have John send out to everyone. I watched Elder Bednar's talk from 12 years ago, and then I watched the, uh, his new devotional. But then this other video popped up about um, all the revelation, all the talks that President ben, um, Nelson has given in the last six years about getting ready for the second coming. And I just felt like there, there's more. For me, I felt like pay more attention, Colleen. It's time Time, it's not going to be like a news flash like you see on the news that says the second coming's coming, right? Like the prophet is planting bits and pieces and, and talking to us and sharing it. And they're not telling us to get physically ready anymore, which, of course, we should be physically prepared, right? We should have our you know supplies. But they're telling us to get spiritually ready to see Jesus again, right? And I don't know if it'll be in my lifetime or your lifetime, but we should be ready, right? And I do feel like there's a new ur uh, um, higher urgency with it, if that makes sense. I mean, I even had the thought that my my year supply of food is not easily accessible because there's a bunch of crap in our garage that's blocking it. And I just had the thought this morning, you should clean out your garage so you could get to your camping supplies and your camp and your lanterns and your food supply and stuff. Right now because we had one of our kids move back in with us. There's a bunch of junk uh, and stuff. Everything's a kind of scampy wampus in the garage. So if we last, if we had a disaster and we needed to get to something, um, we would not be able to do it. So just little things. That's, Thank what, you you for, for me. Huh? That's what you have me for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Anyway. I just, I love all these insights. Thank you for sharing, Katrina. I'm so glad you guys are here. I love that we spend time talking about these important spiritual things and about Jesus and the latter days and these talks. I don't know who else is there. Does anyone else want to share? I would love to have somebody else share. Elaine? I just had this thought that... Uh... Okay, go ahead, Aline, and then we'll hear from Elaine. Go ahead, Aline, we want to hear it. Well, I just was thinking about what you said and how they emphasize, they used to emphasize the physical, you know, getting your food, getting your food, getting your food and everything. And now um, the, the, the emphasis is to be spiritually prepared because obviously that's where our greatest trial is going to be coming from. So, I mean, that's why they're not, they're emphasizing it over and over, prepare, 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 and spiritually, spiritually. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that means the battle is going to be spiritual. The most it's the coming. Part. Maybe the worst part will be spiritual. That's my thought. 
<laughs> I love it. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, if you guys have thoughts, just because you already shared, you can share again, right? This is a discussion. Okay, Elaine. Hi. Hey, thanks so much. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're awesome. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm really happy to be here. Really grateful uh, for the invitation uh, from Adrian to join and to, to just feel the spirit. I've never participated in exactly this type of a thing before, and I'd really like to. Um, this talk just really, um, I'm, I'm just really on a temple kick right now. Like everything is temple, temple, temple to me. And, and um, it wasn't always that way. I mean, I've always, I, you know, I received my endowment 50 years, 50, almost 51 years ago. And most of my life I've just gone through and I've tried to go on a regular basis and I felt peace there. But honestly, I just had no clue what was going on. I just did not get it. I just, um, you know, and I would, I, I would try and, you know, I have a pretty much, you know, back in the day, I had it pretty much memorized, but I just didn't see the relevance to me. And then um, um, I just have, um, as well, since President Nelson um, talked about, you know, a couple of years ago, if you don't love going to the temple, go more, not less. And so I decided that's okay. That's what I'm going to do. And then Adrian started working in the temple and she says, mom, you should do that. You should totally, you should totally be a temple worker. And I thought, oh, I can't, I'm too busy. We're gone for the summer. I can't do that. You know, and, and I don't get it. Why would I, why would I? And, um, yeah, but I just had kept thinking about it and I've just really made an effort to go more. And, um, just this fall, I just really had it impressed on my heart to, that, okay, now's the time. And so I talked to my bishop and like four days later, I heard from the temple president, had my interview. I was set apart and, and I work Tuesday mornings <laughs> at the temple. So we're closed for cleaning for two, two weeks. And so I, I was so excited because I knew I would be get, be able to come to this, um, for today and, and hopefully for next week too. But I, that's that's what holiness to the Lord is coming to mean for me. Um, just trying to make um, my life like what I'm feeling and, and hearing and practicing at the temple. Um, that I just want to be, I just want to be holiness. And I just want to, um, you know, you, you drive uh, you know, I, I go to the temple, I have to be there like about, or I get to be there about six o'clock in the morning. And as I'm driving down this hill, there it is just all light and so beautiful and so peaceful as I drive in. And that's, I, that's the kind of light I just want to be. And um, for my family and, and for those around. So anyway, I'm grateful. And um, I'm grateful that Adrian has told me about Colleen and what, an ex what a great example that she has been in her life and how, um, and I have a friend in Italy that I've told about Colleen, <laughs> Colleen and, and, you know, about uh, who needs me today. And, and that's become my friend's mantra too. Okay. Who needs me today? Heavenly father. And I just, I'm just really grateful for, opportunities to gather like this to talk about important things and to have something positive to do today instead of worrying about what's going on going on in the world and anyway just grateful grateful for your welcoming and grateful for the things that we've discussed everybody has just shared something i've been writing notes and looking forward to the replay because there are so many things that i just really needed to hear today so thank you Oh, Elaine, we're so glad you're here. You know, it's so amazing is um, it's funny how the temple, our our interaction changes over time, right? With the temple, which is our, in, really is our interaction with our, our relationship with the Savior and Jesus Christ, right? Because it's his house, right? And when I went through the temple the first time, I was the first person in my family. Um, my mom couldn't go through the temple. My grandma had been through, but my mom had not been through because she was married to a non-member at the time. And I really didn't have any temple prep. I, I did get to go with my uncle is like, I wish my uncle was still alive. I can feel him sometimes when I'm at the temple, but he was really smart and just like, um, like, wow, smart about the temple. So I did get to go to his house before I went to the temple and he went through the scriptures with me, but I didn't have a good basis. Like, and there's no recording, right? I took notes, but um, anyway, but I was pretty freaked out when I went to the temple um, 30, 
how long have I been married? 36 years ago. Anyway, I was grateful to see that a lot of my cousins were there and I was like, well, they're pretty normal people. So I guess this isn't totally crazy, but I, 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 I'm just saying that was my first initial response. And I did go to the temple, but I didn't quite get it. I didn't remember about initiatories. I, I didn't remember about initiatories. I didn't even remember having that done. And I had a horrible ceiling. It's a long story, but um, it doesn't really matter. But so my wedding was not... Um, um, my father-in-law uh, wasn't, uh, he, he didn't think John marrying me was a good idea. And so, and he made that very clear right before I walked into the ceiling room. And so I just remember crying, I, I, cause he told John he was making a, a mistake to marry me. And, and my whole family's outside. I don't know people in my aunt Aline and my grandma were in there, but other than that, I didn't know anyone. So I just remember crying the whole time. So I don't really remember the ceiling. And it's interesting that I went back to the temple, John and I would go, but mostly I don't think Satan wanted us to go because we would fight right before we, you know, we'd fight the whole way there and just horrible. Anyway, uh, Satan was busy trying to make sure we didn't experience the power that comes and, and the goodness and the peace that comes. And it's interesting that, and I've gone to the temple very consistently, but I really, um, Working in the temple, well, first of all, one time I went and did initiatories because they said it was all that was open. There was nothing else to do one time. And I think you know, I'd been married eight years before I went back to, you know, and did initiatory. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is my favorite thing ever. These blessings are incredible. Like, I want to do this all the time and, and just hear the promises. Because I remember how I told you it's what's in it for Colleen. So I'm like, what? these blessings are incredible. And so I have... um really, really love the, uh, and that's my go-to thing is to go do initiatories now. But I remember pleading with Heavenly Father two years ago for a, a, a situation that I thought for sure was just going to be the worst thing ever. And our son was looking at a 26-year prison sentence. And um, it was very overwhelming. And he's young. And, um, and it was based on some lies from the police, uh, um, he not that he was a saint. There's stuff he did that wasn't great too, but they lied about quite a few things. And um, anyway, I remember pouring my heart out in the celestial room to Heavenly Father, and I remember that impression came to me. Oh, you should work in the temple. And I thought, oh, that's not a really good idea. I have dyslexia, and I'm very busy. I'm drowning, and I already have a big calling and. I just, I don't think that was a good idea. A lot of times I tell Heavenly Father his ideas aren't good ideas, just so you know, we're being fully honest here. And um, just like I didn't think hosting this was a good idea. And they always turn out to be great ideas. I don't know why at uh, 37 years of marriage, I haven't figured out that Heavenly Father's ideas are great. I still always tell him that's the worst idea ever, right? Like That's when, a yeah. bad idea, God. Yeah, I'm, I'm always telling that. I remember when Carter had cancer and Heavenly Father told me we should feed the people at Chalk and do the gift cards and everything the week before Christmas. I was so out of it. I'm like, that's like the worst of your ideas. That's, you're like on crack cocaine. There's no way I'm doing that. I was so disrespectful to Heavenly Father. Like, no way. And I did finally do it, but I did waste two days not doing it. But I have a pattern in my life of telling Heavenly Father, that's the worst idea I've ever heard. <laughs> and um, I don't know, maybe you guys, I, I'm the only one, but I have a, a serious pattern of, telling Heavenly Father, that's the worst idea ever. And I remember telling Heavenly Father, because that's the worst idea I could never, because back then you had to memorize everything in the temple. Now they have the cards and, and now we have iPads in our, our temple is a test temple. And last week they installed iPads in our temple. And so you can just read everything, right? You don't have to memorize anything. Anyway, I told him I can't remember anything. That's not a good plan for me. So I didn't tell anyone the thought came to me to work in the temple. I don't want John to know. I don't want anyone to try and talk me into that boy. <laughs> and, um, Three days later, the stake president asked John and I to be temple workers. <laughs> so um, God, God worked around that, right? And, yeah, um, we worked around it. You know what it reminds me of when I'm like that? I think about how you're trying to put a shirt on a two-year-old and they are just fighting you. They're not going to put the arms in us and sleeves, you know, just fighting all the way. And then they get the shirt on and they're like, oh, look at this. <laughs> 
exactly it. And so uh, that's what I, I, I remind myself of that image when I'm, when I'm fighting against something like that. It's like, okay, Heavenly Father, you're dealing with a two-year-old here. <laughs> you're great analogy. <laughs> yeah. My lack of trust, faith, and belief in those moments when it seems like the impossible, when God asks the impossible, is like, goes down to like nothing. Yeah, I don't think that's a good idea. I know. I think that's like too hard. Okay. Yeah, and when we talk about it later, we realize how ridiculous it is. But at the time, it's like, what? Oh, oh, I can't do that. <laughs> right? Isn't that funny? And and literally working in the temple, right, is my favorite favorite thing to do now. And I love helping facilitate the patron experience. I love helping people feel God's love for them in the temple. And then I love how much I'm learning about God and his love for me and the power and that I'm infused with when I'm there. Right. And um, it is amazing that we limit God. We're the ones that limit God in our lives. We we're the ones that put boundaries on him and, and what he can do and what his power can do. And sometimes I have to remind myself, I worship a God that parted the Red Sea. Right. I worship a God that has done so many miracles. He raised the dead. He, he, he cured the woman with the issue of blood just because she touched his hem and had the faith to touch the hem of his um, uh, clothing. And I think that we forget, right? And so my goal is to be a better ambassador, put off the natural man, have more trust, double down on my faith, Ask more often. I, I'm telling you right now, there's so many people who need help. Every day, Heavenly Father tells me this long list of people to text, call, take flowers to, um, pop cards in the mail. I pop a lot of cards in the mail. I just know that people, especially if they're watching the news, um, I don't watch the news anymore. Um, they're, they're feeling uncertain and um, there's a lot of shakiness in the world, so... Anyway, who else would like to share before we go on? I don't know who else is on here. I got to look. Sorry. I'll share. Jessica, we would love to have you share. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. So um, one thought that I had was um, in the at the beginning of the talk when Elder Gong was talking about um, the study of of um people who are religious and the benefits that, that they oh. see in the study, that part. Yeah. I, <laughs> um, love that. I loved that too. And I liked the quote where he says, um, what researchers call religious structure stability offers clarity, purpose, and inspiration amidst life's twists and turns. The household of faith and community of saints combat isolation and the lonely crowd. Holiness to the Lord says no to the profane and no to the snarky cleverness at others' expense. No to algorithms that uh, monetize anger and polarization. Holiness to the Lord says yes to the sacred and reverent. Yes to our becoming our freest, happiest, most authentic, best selves as we follow him in faith. And I really liked that um, quote because um, as we've been talking about what does <laughs> holiness to the Lord mean? look like in everyday life um that quote i kept going back to that quote i mean there was others i highlighted but that one i kept coming back to and um and i was thinking a lot about my son so i'm a, a mom of four boys so there's never a dull moment at our house and um <laughs> corbin my oldest um is in middle school right now and he um where we live uh there's he's one of the only few LDS um, members in his school and he's struggling a lot with a lot of the different things that are you know going through with boys and you know locker room talk and all this kind of stuff and um, he has um, befriended this other um, boy and um, they share a love of video games together and um, this friend of his is very sensitive to what's going on around him in, in like classrooms and things. Um, and he is very sensitive to other people's feelings and things like that. And 
um, his mother and I are friends through Facebook. And um, she was telling me one time, like, how, how is, does your son handle some of these things that my son is always talking about that are happening in school? And my son cannot stand how disrespectful these kids are being to their teachers and um, disrespectful to each other and all the inappropriate things they talk about. And my son is just at a loss. And he um, talks about how your son um, is like his only friend in a couple of classes. And he likes to sit by him because he noticed that your son doesn't join in those kind of conversations. Um, and somehow your son's able to block them out and they'll have their own conversation, my son and your son together. And, and he's just really likes being around him. And and I was just like, wow, thank you. Like, it was a huge compliment um, to hear that. And um, and I so I asked my older son about it. And I said, how are you? How are you handling those kinds of things? You know, you've told me some of them. And um, and we've talked about it and things and discussed how uh, how we can um, still be examples to others, but also not engage in some of those conversations if we don't feel comfortable in things. And and um, it was really interesting because this friend of my son, when he was complaining to his mom, his mom's advice was, go to those friends that make you feel comfortable. Go to those friends that have the light that you want to see, that you want to be around, and just go to them. If other friends are you know, in, she, she said in, in darkness, is how she was saying, if they're in a dark place and you don't want to go there, go to the friends that have light around them. And her son had said that, well, Corbin has light. So I like to go sit by him. And it was one of those things that I thought, wow, like, yeah, he has no idea. He's, uh, this friend is not a member of the church. Um, according to my son, Corbin, he, his family is not religious at all. And they, can notice that light of Christ that we all have, whether we're members of the church or not, but that his friend has noticed that in, in my son. And it just, um, it was a really uh, positive thing to hear. And, and since then, uh, my son Corbin has another best friend. Her name is Violet and they've been friends since they were four years old. And it just so happens that this year they have like three classes together instead of just one. And, um, and Colin, this boy who's not a member is in these classes with them. And so all three of them have become really good friends. And, um, and they talk all the time about how, you know, they like to hang out because they don't, um, in, in one class in particular, they don't talk about profane jokes and things and they, they laugh about it. And, um, and I just think, wow, um, when I think about that quote, that's just in everyday life. Um, holiness to the Lord can be just as simple as kind of what my, uh, the mother said, my friend, uh, the friend's mother about going to those friends that have, uh, that make you happy, that have the light that you want to be around, that are good examples. Um, and we can be our happiest, most authentic, best selves as we follow in faith. That's what the quote says. And, and I'm so grateful that the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, kind of brings that into our lives and it it kind of makes it easy for us. We have this knowledge and we can be examples to those around us and um, help others um, be their best selves too. And um, it's been fun to watch this friendship blossom. And th this boy's been invited to church and a lot of young men activities and things. And it'll be really fun to see where this takes him and his family. But that was my thought today. So thank you. Oh my gosh, Jessica, thank you for sharing. Yeah, that's in paragraph 12. Thank you. And yeah, yeah, it's so good, right? Holiness to mm -hmm. the Lord says no to the profane, no to the snarky cleverness at others' expense, no to algorithms that monetize anger and polarization. Holiness to the Lord says yes to the sacred and reverent, yes to our becoming our freest, happiest, most authentic, best selves as we follow him in faith. I think Lori read that to us too. And I think that um, what a great reminder today on election day um, when our country is so divided and that we can set the example just like your son did, right? And we can be a light and, and 
calm today is probably I felt prompted to check on someone that I had no idea was very upset about some things going on in their life. And she said, thank you so much, because they're, 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 she didn't have control over any of them. And I, I reminded her to focus on what she has control over. And all the stuff she was worried about was way outside of her control. But we all can get caught up in that pretty quickly, right? And um, we can spiral pretty quick. Satan's pretty tricky, and we're, we're, we uh, gravitate to that. Does anyone else have anything they want to say before we wrap up? Someone wrote something in the comments too. Oh, thank you, gorgeous. <laughs> you know, I don't know why. My, my hair has been really good lately, isn't that? It's my best feature. I'm really grateful. Heavenly Father um, gave me good hair. And um, I have really white skin and it sunburns and I have all kind I bruise really easy and I have varicose, not varicose veins, spider veins everywhere. Anyway, there's a lot of flaws here, but the one good thing I have is my hair. <laughs> it's not terrible. But anyway, I love you guys so much. John, did you want to say anything? And Lisa, I love you. Thank you for joining us. Lisa and I grew up our whole lives together across the street <clears throat> together. Isn't she the cutest? Did Chem join us? Yeah, I just love you, gorgeous. John, do you want to say anything? Lisa, do you want to say anything? I'm just really grateful to be here um, and to hear everyone share. Um, I'll share next week. Um, I am just very inspired by everything. And it just makes me um, recognize the little things that we should just be just in the holiness of just, it could be smelling a flower or um, seeing the sun or anything like that. And you just know that, that there is something bigger than us. And sometimes it just takes those silent moments to recognize that. So thank you. It. Yeah. We just got to notice the beautiful world God made for us. Right. And appreciate yeah. that. And those are the things we have control over. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Thanks gorgeous. Yeah. It's, Thanks. it's so fun that Lisa and I grew up our whole lives together. Right. Her older sister was best friends with my little sister growing up. And we grew up right literally across the street from each other. So I, that's one of my favorite things about social media and Zoom and technology. So it makes it so easy to stay in contact with the people we love, right? I know. It's so wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Jessica, that, oh, that story about Corbin. That's just so beautiful that he's such a light in the world and that um that it's it's clear to a friend that that this is the source of light you know uh, that's that's what we're supposed to do let our light so shine so that um people can see and glorify god yeah it's good i love i love it and people are looking for the light right Yes. Not, not everyone wants to be in the darkness and go with the flow of, of the ways of the world, right? That kid wants to be around the light too. And it's okay to be by yourself if there's no one else to be with too, which can be hard, especially when you're a kid, right? And um, I, I know that in my life, and I'm I'm now grateful, it's very easy to say 17 years, uh, Mason and John and I were talking Seven Mason um, getting off probation this week, which we're having a big party for. And um, so now he can travel and he can go to Thanksgiving with us. And anyway, it's a big deal. And he's doing so great. And what a blessing that, you know, we're going in a better direction. But it's interesting that 17 years of this journey. And if you would ask me 15 years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, I would say, oh, it's so difficult. But that the, the, those difficult moments and this difficult uh, the have taught me and shaped me and molded me into a more compassionate, less judgmental um, person. I don't know how to explain that, but a more charitable person and just holding space for people and not judging where people are at because it's so easy to judge, but it's much better to just hold space for people because we actually don't know what we would ever do in any situation unless we're in that situation. John, do you have anything you want to say? Oh, just thanks for doing this. You're doing a great job. Oh, thanks.
If we didn't have John, we, we couldn't. Do really this. good talk. And, uh, you know, continue to be <laughs> mindful of, of what we let into our lives. Okay, next week. And then John's going to send you my other talks I love. There was a few others that I listened to that I just loved um, that he can just stick in the thing because he knows how to do that. I don't know how to do that. Next <laughs> week. Yeah, thank heavens for John Lowe. Uh, next week. Oh, this was such a good talk. I Am He by President Jeffrey R. Holland. It's Christ's charity evident in complete loyalty to divine will persisted and continues to persist. This was a great talk. I love this talk. Also, make sure you go back and listen to Emily Bell Freeman's um, uh, Instagram on Inklings.institute Institu in Inklings from week three, because you should take, I took four pages of notes, but I'm also have a lot to learn in every aspect of my life. Anyway, I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you for joining us. And if you want, share this with people, like and subscribe to our channel. Heavenly Father told me to go all in on spreading love and light on YouTube, which is kind of funny since I don't really know how to do YouTube, but I'm doing it. So <laughs> I don't know, but I'm going to be less like the two-year-old. Anyway, Linda, we hope you feel better. And then for those of you who couldn't join us this week, we hope you get to join us next week. And... Um, we love you. I love you. God loves you. I believe in you. I believe in you so much. Let me just see. There's some stuff in the chat here. Yeah, I love you. You guys are awesome. And if you know people for um, that would like to join us, we'd love to have them for real. This is open to everyone. And I'm going to stop this. And my mom's in India. She's going to the Taj Mahal tomorrow, I think. So I can't wait for her to come back and be safe and, and be here. Hold on.